something not many people know about me is my love of shiny Pokemon. I assume that anybody that clicked on this video already knows what they are, but for the sake of runtime, a shiny Pokemon is the exact same Pokemon, but with different colors. That's it. They don't have any advantage in battle, there aren't any special stats or special moves, it's just different colors. And they sparkle when they enter the battlefield, hence the name Shiny. Woo! The thing that makes them inherently valuable though is just how rare they are. A shiny at full odds, meaning the worst odds possible using no methods to up your chances, is 1 out of 8192, or 1 out of 4096 after generation 6. And at the best odds, I do believe it can be 1 out of 512 under specific circumstances. So having one is like a trophy. Beautiful, illustrious, and shiny. And by God, does YouTube love their top 10 shiny lists. So how about I throw my hand to the ring? But what could I bring to the table that a quadrillion other YouTubers haven't already? Color theory! I mean, I don't know, maybe somebody else has to have watched them all. Yet a trend I've seen is people just saying, hey, these colors are cool, and then not explaining why they think that. Hitmonchan. This shiny is easily one of the best looking and most noticeable shinies from Generation 1. The blue gloves definitely play a huge role in what makes this shiny so awesome, but it doesn't end there. Dude, I love ya, you're a legend, but really? Vomit brown and screen of death blue go together well? Uh, what? Yes, yes, I know that all of this is chalked up to opinion, but god damn it, I like it when people can back up their opinions with an explanation. So that's what I'm gonna do. Just from the pool of the Alolan Pokédex, because I have tons of other favorites, but this makes it easier to make a list of only 10, I'm gonna cover what my personal favorite shinies are and why, using COLOR THEORY! Coming in at number 10 is Two Cannon. The biggest difference is obviously the beak. The switch from warm to cool colors makes it even more menacing with that evil, judging, knowing eye. And rather than just having, say, a purple beak that goes from dark to light, they keep the same effect that the original Toucanon has, adding more red down the beak, which makes for a more visually interesting gradient. The only thing I don't like is this rusty dirt color replacing the gray. I, I mean, why? Gray was a good neutral that fit with the black and white while not detracting from the main attraction. Now it's just... gross. That little addition keeps the shiny from really being a perfect, complete package, making it the highest on this list. Number 9, Mimikyu. I love this Pokemon, but it's high on the list because its shiny isn't much different from the normal colors. It's pretty much just a desaturation. This can be annoying in shinies on the flip side, like Pikachu that just looked like they got the burn tool in Photoshop for a second or two. But this works for Mimikyu. It actually somehow looks softer in that paler shade, which I find makes the Pokemon more appealing. And that's all the little baby wants, just wants to be loved. But a point I think most other people will agree with is that the more black and white it appears in contrast with the normal colors, it looks more ghostly. On to number 8, we've got Drifblim. They took the yellow, which was the accent color, and made it the dominant hue. And for a shiny, this was a clever choice since yellow is purple's complementary color. Complementary colors are directly opposite each other on the color wheel, making them inherently eye-catching. To contrast its new body, they picked another primary color, blue. This could have easily gone awry had they made it a harsh and oversaturated, but instead they lightened it to match the value of yellow so it feels harmonious rather than clashing. Number 7, we've got Marini. I absolutely love the design of this creepy little starfish. I guess just because it's so menacing yet cute at the same time. The blue and purple fit it being a water and poison type, and its accent with the eye, the little fringe on the head is yellow, which as previously mentioned is purple's complement. But this Pokemon shiny abandoned the complementary route and went more analogous. Analogous colors are all right next to each other on the color wheel. These are easy on the eyes because, quite simply, they fit together. They are right next to each other. Best friends! The shiny is mostly unaltered in terms of value, but its palette has been united into rosy pinks and pale orange. They didn't change the yellow, but it still works because of the change to an analogous composition. I know Marini is supposed to be, well, a uh, meanie. But changing its shiny palette from cool to warm, the opposite of how Toucanon worked, makes it appear more sweet as warm colors represent compassion and love. I mean, it's a dick to Corsola, but come on, they just want to eat, we all gotta eat, man, circle of life and shit. And speaking of Corsola, I can't not mention the fact that Meridia and Corsola are opposites in terms of their original colors and shinies. Next up at number 6, Sylveon. 
Just swap the colors! Yeah, that's it! Simple, yet brilliant! We already know that these pastel colors work together beautifully, so why not just mix it up? It looks just as fantastic as a regular color scheme, but it's got just the perfect little twist to make it special as a shiny should be. I don't really have anything else to say about it. I think I've made my case quite clear. Moving on. Number five is... Bruxish. I think I pronounced that right. Fuck it, I don't know. And honestly, I don't even like these things at all. Like, I literally named mine Uggo and only got it to complete the Pokedex. But what I like about it shiny is... I think it was meant to look like a piranha plant from Mario. That was literally my immediate thought when I saw it for the first time. Look, the teeth and the lips and- yeah, the lips of the plant are white, but sh 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 here's some white and yellow leading to the red body with white spots, and lastly, a very bright green on the fins, you know, like leaves. I cannot unsee it. I'm willing to believe it was intentional, and I find that hilarious. But if not, it's still at least a very unique shiny in just how different these color schemes are, and just how bright and primary this palette is that it stands out amongst the rest. It's really only in fifth place because it's not really good, it's not really bad, it's just interesting. Number four is a shared spot between Phantom and Salandic because their palettes are almost the exact same, but I'll go over both separately. Salandit being a sneaky little well bandit in the night, it gives a reason for its very dark appearance. But fuck his survival, this looks awesome! Inverting the value of a shiny's color always makes for a sharp contrast. This also lets the red marking on the back stand out more. As for Phantom, my reason for loving Salanda's black and white palette is the same. It's eye-catching. And I love the change of the leaves to red. Not only is red the complement to green, but it makes Phantom and Trevenant look like trees in autumn. The only reason I'm putting Phantom on the list rather than Trevenant is, is just because it's it's way cuter, okay? I, I, I just really like cute things. For number three, we've got another two-parter, Boldor and Requinid. Again, because they have the same palette. The richness of that purple against the heavily saturated, almost neon turquoise, or just pale blue for Araquanid, looks incredible. Blue and purple naturally go well together being on the cool side of the wheel, but what really gives these the extra kick is the orange, which happens to be blue's complement. Bam! The perfect finishing touch on these shiny compositions. Number two, shiny Minior. It's like a combination of all the Minior's together, not only because it's black being the combination of all colors using subtractive color mixing, but because all of the other colors of the Minior's are actually in it! Look at all those other little pieces inside of it. It takes what could be just an average shiny and elevates it. You can tell they actually thought the shiny through rather than just slapping some colors together like a lot of other shinies. And number one... Decidui. Am I pronouncing it right? I don't care. Look at this thing. Just look at this thing. What can I say? It's incredible. It's like they took the original colors and just pushed them to the next level. The beige was brightened to pure white, the green tinted with blue to make it a rich teal, and to keep the face from being too muddy, the orange deepened into a crimson red, bringing the eye to a sharp focal point. Changing the brown wings to black makes it look like a badass cape, and again, it achieves the same dramatic light and dark contrast that I've proven to love dearly over many of the other shinies on this list. Decidui is definitely, in my opinion, the most striking and well-composed shiny out of the entire Alolan Pokédex. And there you have it! But one person's opinion in a sea of other videos, but I hope I was able to give you at least some food for thought about color compositions. Share your favorites in the comments below, and who knows when I'll see you next because I don't have an upload schedule. Fuck man, I just made this on a whim, it took a fucking week, but YouTube isn't a job for me. I've got like 69 subscribers, is anyone still even watching this?